right, gonna head out to uh, finish up the defrost timer call. Um, I put the nozzle in that uh, distributor on that evaporator coil. We'll check it out. All right, let's get rolling. There's the old doghouse in the daytime. We'll get this off of here. There's our little unit. All right. We'll get into uh, changing out the defrost timer first. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to go in with the Intermatic Electromechanical Defrost Control to replace the old Paragon 400100 okay <clears throat> it's a very simple setup your hot your neutral and your switch leg right here your load goes into defrost normally closed goes normally open and it comes out of defrost and then these close that simple and yeah they're using a green wire for the load because it's a three wire SJ cord because we're refrigeration guys and we're goofy and that's it there's really not much to it <clears throat> and these ones here I'm pretty sure that it just comes out like that and then you got your can screwed in up here and we'll get that unscrewed real quick okay so this is the uh, new time clock and this one clock will replace a ton of clocks for electric defrost and the whole deal so <clears throat> this dip switch here it's gonna let you determine if two and four are normally opened or normally closed so I'm gonna have it in the, in the setting for normally closed and it's gonna be power up to two neutral on N and my switch leg will be on four and with this clock, it gives us the ability to have different defrosts throughout the day. Each pin is 15 minutes. Um, with the old timer, they were just banging it off for two hours at night. Um, and I don't mind using these ones when we're just putting a load um, of, a, of this solenoid valve right here through these electronic contacts. Um, they're rated up to 40 amps. So you could actually put your defrost heaters through there on your freezer. Um, normally on the on that type, I like the old Paragon timer with the big metal contacts. Okay, let's get into this thing. So on the back of the timer, it's got the screw mount, and then you got your old screw up there. It'll just go right on there. slide on Boop. and then I'll get the drill and we'll put in the other two on the bottom and the container will be in has a uh, regular old knockouts like any other box and you knock it out for your connections so these two holes here were knockouts and they actually line up with the old screw holes so it totally fits right in there. Let me get that screwed in. Okay, so now we've got the defrost timer in. Oh, it's green light for refrigeration. And then if we cycle it into defrost, you get a red defrost light. And we're turning off this solenoid valve now so the unit will pump down. Now, with this timer, it'll give me more options for defrost. They get busy at lunch, and after their lunch rush, I might go a little 15 minute defrost. And then they shut down. They're usually out of there by midnight or one in the morning on the weekends. So I'd like to give them a little defrost then. It's about an hour. And then if you want to see it come out of defrost, then 
it's feeding the refrigerator again. And now I'll get digging into this up here for the nozzle. And there's her cover on. And she's all up there nice and happy. Pump this thing down right here, the liquid line. I'll pump all the refrigerant back into the receiver and the condenser. So we can work inside at our evaporator coil. Okay, so here's how I found the coil the other night. And I noticed the two bags hanging in the coil with the nozzles. So I'll go ahead and pull those back down again. And then we'll open up this flare from the TXV and take a look inside the distributor and see if there's a nozzle in there. Okay, moment of truth. There's no nozzle in there. Just the distributor. You can see the two holes for the distributor in there. So we'll get the correct nozzle. Okay, so I got the distributor wrapped in a wet rag. Um, I got some flux on here. I'm going to sweat this coupling off of here so we can get to the tubing to install the nozzle. Okay, here's our nozzle. You'll notice on the on there on the two sides. One kind of has a beveled edge. The other side's kind of flat. So I want it to go in like this with the beveled edge for the inlet. You'll see it's kind of 45 out in there. And then this is our retaining clip. Okay, let's get it. Now the nozzle and the retaining clip are installed inside the distributor. That's what it looks like when it's in there. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild this up and get it reconnected to the TXP. Now we got our nozzle in. Okay, I'm in the back of my van. I'm going to redo that little piece that goes on the TXP. Got my copper here. Reamer beamer. Two buku. Okay. We got a nozzle installed. We remade up this piece new flare nut. We got that all back together. We reassembled our TXV. Now we need to go outside and change our liquid line filter dryer. And then we'll nitrogenize the system and check all our work for leaks to make sure we're tight. And then we'll be ready to pull a vacuum. Nitrogen checking my stuff. You're going to love this one. Okay, all soap bubbled up. Oh yeah, I got this little spray bottle at the hardware store. It's got the big opening like a Mickey's big mouth. Yeah, it works really good, so it doesn't look like anything's leaking. So we can get this on the vacuum pump and get cracking. Yep. Nothing up there is leaking like we got it hot. I had it wrapped in the rag pretty good, so. All right, let's get it on the vacuum pump. Okay. Back up and running. At 14.2 degrees superheat. I have that probe hanging in front of the box in the return air. There's a thermometer. And 42 degrees, so that's a good temperature to check superheat. The nozzle reinstalled, we're up, we're running. 
So I'm going to adjust it. I'm going to shoot for around 12, maybe 10, 10 to 12 degrees superheat. So I'm going to open that valve up a little bit more. In our TXB, that's our adjustment screw. Back it out to lower the superheat, turn it in to increase our superheat. So I backed it out and I'm letting it adjust. <clears throat> and I turned it probably less than a quarter of one turn. And we'll see where this starts to settle down in here. Okay. I got that adjusted to right around 11 degrees superheat. There it goes, 10.8811. I'm at 25 degree evaporator. My box is 42.3 degrees right now in the return yard, still cooling down. We're right there around 11 degrees superheat. Okay, that's going to do it for this one. Defrost timer's replaced. We installed the nozzle that was never installed. Set the superheat, we're all coming back around. Just about there. Happy little box. Okay, thanks for watching.